Okay, if you're an American and if you speak English and you go to a church where everybody speaks English, guess what? Let me reveal something to you that maybe has slipped by your pea brain mind. If you go to an American church, you're living in America, you go everywhere that speaks English at your church, you don't need the gift of languages. <laughs> you know, you got a problem with English? All right, you don't need the gift of languages. You don't need, there needs to be no one there speaking in a tongue because it's not needed, all right? All right, let's take a look at what the Bible says here. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. Now, this verse, you've got to understand this first and foremost. If you don't understand this verse, you will be confused, okay, about the subject of speaking in tongues. All right, this is what it says. It says, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace in all the churches of the saints. If you go to a church and you are confused, you don't understand what's being said. Get out. Run like hell in the opposite direction of that church. Okay, that's just that simple. Because God is not the author of confusion, all right? You know, and some people will say, well, I have a special prayer language that I communicate to God with. Well, let me ask you a question. Does your God not understand English? What's wrong with English? Well, that's a, that's a language. Your God can't understand English, and so you need a special prayer language, right? Is that, is that what you're telling me? No, 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 God understands English. I guarantee you, God understands English. All right, 1 Corinthians 14, verse two, I'm reading from the contemporary English version. If you speak languages, there's the word, languages, that others don't, under, don't know, God will understand what you're saying, though no one else will know what you mean. You will be talking about mysteries that only the Spirit understands. Now, this is so simplistic. If I started speaking in a different dialect right now, guess what? You wouldn't understand me. But God would. Yeah. I would understand, you know, what I'm saying, but you wouldn't understand. This is so simplistic, okay? All right, and again, you gotta keep in mind, the purpose for the gift of language was to, was to evangelize the world. It was to communicate the gospel. All right, let's, let's continue on, verse three. First Corinthians 14, verse three, reading from the contemporary English version, but when you prophesy, now prophesy is an inspired preaching, all right? You will be understood and others will be helped. They will be encouraged and made to feel better. Notice this. They're made to feel better because they understand what's being said. Do you get my point? They're not made to feel better because people are acting like a buffoon, lying on the floor laughing, speaking in a gibberish that no one understands. That's not why they're made to feel better. They're made to feel better because they understand what's being communicated. You know, I mean, you gotta understand this. This is so simplistic. They feel better because they understand. And I'm convinced that one of the, you know, it's like if we don't understand, then we're not accountable. In other words, if we don't understand, there's nothing to miss, right? <laughs> then, yeah, if we don't understand, there's nothing to miss. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's the kind of church I want to go to. If I don't understand, there's nothing to miss. Yeah. I'll choose the church of my choice, one where I don't understand. Ugh. All right. Is that really in the Bible? What you think is in the Bible is not.